And it's still the breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Chris Kende Wando is with us this morning. He joins us via phone. Uh, Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Sophie. How are you this morning? Very well, Chris. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Chris is an executive director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Uh, we'll start off with the punch, Chris. The punch says, Buhari's Kano visit, protesting youths, barricade roads, and stone helicopter. That's a conversation I and Kofi had. Nigerians don't appreciate what they have, says Buhari, as protesters rampage. Foreign elements using Boko Haram to destabilize Nigeria. President insists APC campaign cancel kicks as PDP blames Tunubu Ganduje for attacks. New Naira racketeering booms in Lagos, Abuja, Anambra. DSS arrests unauthorized dealers. POS operators uh, hype charges. And just before we move away now, you find panic as Lagos hoodlums invade school and chase pupils. That's it this morning on The Punch. Let's quickly move over to the news. next uh, newspaper on our list. Of course, uh, take a few of those headlines and then we go over to Chris uh, Kende and Wando. All right, headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Banks fail to dispense cash in halls, ATM terminals. Banks fail to dispense ca tem cash in halls, ATM terminals. Uh, POS operators hawkers sell narrow notes in cities. In Mayfield's action political, says Rep's leader. Uh, protesters raise, protesters raise uh, APC office, Tinubu Shetima Oshun Center. Uh, Tinubu, we will use oil to develop a quiet bomb state. Um, are some headlines on the front page of the nation. Well, we, let's quickly turn our attention from, you know, the uh, nation newspaper this morning and look at The Guardian. The Guardian says Nigeria must not fail with 2023 polls. UN scribe warns and uh, charges MBA to ensure success of general elections. MBA apologizes to Nigerians for neglecting the role. Polls must hold as scheduled, a fanny fair insists. Once again, use of court to abort exercise, EU deploys 100 observers to monitor elections. Sharia Council feared stage or staggered polls may instigate violence. INEC must pass confidence tests, tackle underage voting and vote buying. Uh, that's it. I just take one and then we'll move away. Despite extension, Nigerians can't withdraw old or new notes. There's no money. <laughs> I said on the Guardian. And the last one we have on our table this morning is a Nigerian Tribune, PDP, APC, uh, fight over Buhari's visit to Kano. Uh, is the lead one there. Ojo Legba breach accident. Sawolu directs trial of truck owner uh, driver. Um, Atiku will grant Kano unconditional release if elected president. Uh, DSS intercepts syndicates selling new currency notes. Bank officials implicated and uh, only military aircraft can land in Ekiti Airport, according to the government uh, of that state, I believe. Okay, uh, we'll bring Chris at this point. Chris, good morning to you once again. Uh, I'd like us to start with the Naira story. Naira is, uh, some will say, now become a black market currency like the US dollar in Nigeria. Uh, the Tribune gives us uh, some, some information. Uh, one of the articles there on the front page talking about the Department of State Services or Security Services selling the new uh, intercepting syndicates uh, selling the new currency and the same bank officials have been implicated. Uh, we want to uh, connect that with what the nation has on its front page. Uh, banks fail to dispense cash in halls, ATM terminals. Uh, wh what are your thoughts on this, Chris? Well, um, probably the DSS is seen the first time that for Nigerians, we are used to um, this uh, selling of Naira, uh, new Naira notes have been going on for years, not just this in Naira notes. So if you may see if you are a, a regular attendee at uh, various parties in town, you see that it just to the entrance of those parties, uh, you see uh, people um, holding um, new Naira notes when you can't see any of them in the back. And if, when you are seated, you see them bringing it to you uh, to buy at uh, an extra cost. Sometimes they say one for one thousand naira, you pay one thousand three. 
that 300 naira. I continue to ask myself, why should I pay that 300 naira for a, a 1,000 naira value? So, but we you know our people and the way they rule and uh, our mentality. But that is even uh, either here or there. You must also, also have seen on social media where bills and bills of this uh, of this dinner they are very they are very cars I mean, the, the bank ATMs and them um, uh, is uh, the bank um, hall. You see the people throwing bills and bills on and throwing people with that uh, so throwing it up and seeing scattering everywhere. It's all about social media. So, um, if the DSS are just working up to cut this, well, all well and good, but I think don't see them able to do anything. So, because this, and this is where I tend to agree with the central bank, because that, um, the bank, uh, was laying some panky panky with this in our notes. Because definitely, the speculators um, don't go to central bank to collect this new note. They go to the bank, and from what I heard, um, the bank officials give this uh, this uh, this money to these holders uh, yes, yeah, those that go around to them at the premium, and they collect their own. So that is what is happening. And um, with the ten day extension for the old naira, I said the problem is about the old. So it's having the new naira. I don't think it's a thousand naira. Or two thousand naira, I thought at any given point in time. The problem is that the mechanics also practically all the ATMs at Arampan have shut down. Yesterday I went to about eight of them and I couldn't start the queue, so I didn't even wait. And that has been the situation. Now we are also having hearing the directive that the central bank has given a directive to the bank not to dispense the new naira notes. That's the five hundred, two hundred and one thousand so cancer that any place that comes to um, collect money to just um, the um, old 100 naira, 50 naira, or 20 naira. I um, don't know how that is going to work. Uh, Chris, I, I'd like you to still, you know, talk on this. It's on The Guardian. We're still talking about the naira note and all of the saga. Uh, I mean, despite the extension, Nigerians can't withdraw old and new notes. The banks are not giving money out. Whether it's the old money or it's the new one, the ATMs, I mean, money is scarce. So, um, can the DSS still address this issue, or do we need the CBN, you know, to yeah, act? The DSS cannot address the issue. I just said that I went about 7, 8 p.m. Uh, point yesterday. I couldn't make it in the past. The few ones that are defensive, if you see the long queue, uh, I, there's no way I can wait to do it. So, um, the, nearest, the nearest option now for the POS point, some of them are also not prepared. I was able to get cash yesterday and old Naira not not. So, um, should still remain the central bank. Bank say he has a bridge. So, have they been moving around the bank? Have they been moving around the bank just to make sure that this money is in the gold? Because the central bank said that it's going to set up a task force that will be going to the vault court of the banks to find out why they are not dispensing. What has been the investigation? How many of the bank managers have been arrested? How many of the banks have been sanctioned? Until they start with the, we continue to have this problem all across that this Naira note has to be found. We are prepared. There have been so many excuses. Uh, some of the bank the politicians come and um, pack the hostings in their millions. And, uh, and what is happening now, let me repeat, is you see that the politically exposed individuals are big, so called big shots. Just call a bank manager and bring me 100 million naira to my house. And they send the account officer to the carry this hundred of new naira uh, and take it to the. If they don't do that, they just try to close up the account and no bank manager wants to hear that a, a so called big man closes his account. Why the big men are the ones having all these money? Men and uh, women like you and I are the ones suffering the effect. So let's see what goes uh, with the other things in the next few days. But in our note, to be found. All right, thank you very much, um, uh, Chris. We go to more uh, of uh, this uh, uh, the headlines. And uh, United Nations is warning through its scribe that Nigeria must not fail with the 2023 polls, is what the Guardian is saying.
That's Nigerians count down to the presidential polls uh, in about 25 days' time. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations and the Chair on UN Sustainable Group, uh, Ms. Amina J. Mohammed, has warned that Nigeria cannot afford to fail with elections. Um, uh, she's a Nigerian and she's speaking on behalf of the United Nations. What are your thoughts on what she's saying? Because she's urging the NBA to ensure the success of elections. It's not international uh, the United Nations to tell us um, uh, the validity or to us to make sure that um, the 2020 election is right out there. We know that the 2020 election must be right out there. I want to believe because the vote on that this is going to be one of the fairest and freest elections we're going to have uh, in the history of Nigeria. Whether that should be true or not, let's be seen. But I want to believe him. And, um, so for the United Nations coming out to say that, I would take, I would not take it from the point of the United Nations. I'd rather take it from the point of Aminatu, who is a Nigerian, a former uh, Nigerian minister, uh, uh, a former head of one of the MD, MDAs or the MDG in Nigeria, who is now the deputy, uh, um, uh, secretary general of the United States, uh, United Nations, sorry. But, um, we are looking forward I'm uh, hoping that the 2020 election will be as smooth and credible as it is. And all that depends on several factors. It's a foremost in INEC, ability to be able to deliver on promises, including the use of um, the change uh, the debate, which we have seen recently from the, um, the verdict of the electoral tribunal in Oshun. Uh, was as... Uh, 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 Truly as it should be, uh, it was that um, there were massive um, both, um, additional of um, votes and overvoting to the extent that over 100,000 uh, votes were uh, were deducted from that of um, the winner of the election, Governor Deleke, which made it to for the tribunal to obtain his victory. If he just wants, he had an overvoting of over 100,000. Then you cannot imagine what will happen in the general election that is coming up in the next few days. So I hope that INEC has able to get it out right and making sure that this beaver is waterproof so that we'll be able to deliver. Second is going to be on security. And that is where it, um, we are going to have issues. I also hope that the security agencies are, are doing the need to by making sure that every need and credit of Nigeria is um, protected and secured so that Nigerians can go out and freely exercise their rights as individuals. That is that. Then the third one also would be the attitude of the political parties. I hope they are making sure that they are telling their, um, the, their supporters not to resort to violence. And the, for me, the most important one is the ability of Nigerians, uh, you and I, to go out to vote, uh, making sure that we have picked up our PPCs and coming out to exercise. I'm not just ranting on social media. You see that most of the elites, they just rant on social media, rant on Facebook, Twitter, and the rest of them. On the day of election, we want to out to vote. That is in the city room and watch it in the nation. The mother young man, we the nearest uh, to play football. We have oh over goodness. 90 million Nigerians that have been accredited, uh, accredited for this election. Let us come out to vote for that. Right. So at the end of this call, to say that, yes, I was part of the process of the process, and whatever they ask from the day, they could want to be reacted. All right. Uh, Chris, w w we seem to be having, you know, uh, not a very smooth uh, connection from, from your end. Uh, we just hope that you, maybe you could just move around. It's one of those tricks. I'm sure you can get to a point where the network will be favorable. I mean, I'm just saying. So we can hear you clearly. All right. Uh, but if you can hear me, uh, I, I think you, we should also... Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Sounds clear, better than what we had. Uh, Buhari's Kano visit, protesting youths barricade roads and stone helicopter. I'm sure you have seen this particular story. And uh, there are several riders. Uh, Nigerians don't appreciate what they have, says Buhari as protest rampage. I, I'd like you to you know, share your thoughts on that. That's on the punch as the board headline right there. Well, the, the visit of the president to Kanu, um, the largest thing um, for me, he an eye opener. Um, that is if I was aware. Don't forget that the president was in 
That's one where I had that was listed by a chopper. We are at some of the places we are commission project. Uh, don't forget that also uh, this is what the legislation was what I was proposed initially until the county state government said that we are ready. Um, what happened was um, shameful, um, but not unexpected because it shows the countenance of Nigerians and um, some people who are to a large extent are bearing the front of, of the policy process. Um, at times, some people say it's, motivated, it's politically motivated, but and it has always been a stronghold of the president. So, and it, it, it is the ruling party that is in government in Canada uh, State. So, that I totally condemn the attack. It wasn't necessary. No reason should anybody attack for your president. Is our president, irrespective of whatever you feel about, um, is still the president. So, that I feel the big between the APC and the uh, PDP and social media, which must have rightly seen some of the um, most persons of, uh, of the PDP had a big going over it, and the reaction from the, um, it's dead. My own, the fear is really, um, it, it touches me most was statement credited to the president, Chibet, and where he said that foreign, uh, that, uh, foreign nations or individuals are behind the, uh, the attempt to stabilize Nigeria through the use of Boko Haram and the rest of them. That is very wicked for me. Who are these foreign nationals? Who are these foreign nations? Who want to disablock Nigeria? For that to be coming from the president, it's not certain information, which is not a possible to that. And, um, and I think you should be able to share that with us. And also tell Nigeria who these foreign elements are, so that we can know who our enemies are, and who are those that are trying to um, uh, disablock Nigeria. Not just telling us, but also tell us at times we made by Nigeria. Uh, and security agencies to be able to make sure that elements are eliminated so that we can be able to have our eyes put our eyes twice between. Then that to me was the touch and that to me was what touched me most of all the other I did in Canada. Is that statement that certain um, uh, foreign nationals are behind the attempt to destabilize Nigeria. That is a way the aggregation too. All right. Uh, on the front page of the punch, the Zeni is Alice Maduke is asking the federal government to return assets seized from her uh, back to to her. Well, the Zeni is the Zeni. The Zeni. Yeah. The story. Don't forget that uh, several um, properties belong to belong to the Zeni. So with our, so we are stronger. Our jewelry, not the point where we are heard that she has jewelry worth on billions and billions of naira and rest of them. And there's some pro properties that are profited or uh, we are confiscated, yes, profited to the courts. Um, yes, it was, it was effectively, uh, prosecuted, uh, prosecuted that, um, each, um, uh, those, uh, issues to a logical constitution and judgment, valid judgment was given. But she had the right of appeal at uh, the court of appeal as well as, um, at the Supreme Court. So probably what she's doing is trying to go on appeal. Um, and that she'll be able to contract a, a prison lawyer who she believes is able to do that. But for us, just a few weeks back, we have a situation where over nine, um, over 40 properties belonging to the former, uh, deputy senior president, Ikeko Emandu, was also forfeited and, um, also confiscated. Um, by the court, uh, but he went on appeal, um, and that, um, court, uh, that was marketed by a judge in Africa who said that he was given that directive, and those 40 properties, uh, were released to, um, Jeffrey Madu. So that in itself must have, um, given from, um, uh, Alison Madu, some hope that probably if she also attempts to recover some of the property, she may get. So that is what she my question has, has been uh, inside how many years now? If you have any issues, you have to come over to Nigeria to ensure the issue. So that I have some of the questions that we don't have on able to manage my when she was the minister. Well, I'd like you to respond to uh, the Punch newspaper. I mean, there's a headline. Uh, it's very scary. Panic is... Lagos hoodlums, I mean, the fact that they have to be specific. Uh, 
invaded school and chased pupils. It was stated that uh, no fewer than 40 hoodlums had invaded a private school, a uh, shalom group of schools in Ikpaja area of Lagos State. And uh, I'm just, you know, trying to wrap my head around that. Well, you can help us understand it. it sh should this be, you know, a security concern? It should be a security concern. Um, for a long time, there have not been any kind of uh, those, uh, kind of um, um, attitude or invasion of security at the PR in Lagos. Don't forget that was at the point when we are, that was very interesting to areas like Ikurutu and the fair some years back. And I uh, took the combined effort of the police and the security agencies to basically do this report. So this report coming in, uh, I don't have to see this uh, yet. Um, should be a wake up call. Our security all secondary schools and all the science should be on red at large. And uh, I think should be met to secure them. So believe that uh, because uh, so the police have the number of police and we're heading towards the nation. Um, this is where uh, the state uh, security apparatus, like the neighbor wards, the neighbors, don't have a mistake in this. The neighbors are supposed to be part of the southwest and the initiative, uh, those that initiated their motel. I don't know till now why they got to be not um, using that security as well. Uh, it is not a for the Lagos government and security agencies in Lagos to make sure that um, make schools in Lagos are well secure so that we don't have this. A little to add, so, sorry to inter interject, uh, Chris, just a little add in my help. Uh, th these land, these uh, uh, hoodlums, like Messi said, they, they are land grabbers. They, they, um, they want to take the school's land, is what we're hearing. So, can and so definitely it's not like um, uh, NAFAS or whatever. Um, it's not that you pay it for that. It's land, they are land here, but it's a legal thing to make you and find out what the problem is and what the situation is. I was a valley, the, um, the land was properly sold to the, uh, to the owners or the occupiers of the square. If it was not, I think that should be properly investigated by the state government. So that all our give practice with the assurance so that we don't see a recurrence. But at the end of the children might some of them might even get caught in the crossfire and for what they are they don't know. But I think Lagos is done with anything that and investigate and make sure that um so, yeah. All right. Uh, Chris, we have to go now. Thank you so much uh, yeah. for making our time to be with us. We really do appreciate your time. So if you are missing, do you have to have that comfort zone. <laughs> no, I, I think the, I, I do not want the DSS to look for me. Uh, for <laughs> no, yes, yes. Yes. Looking at you, Naira. I'm not asking for you, Naira. I think where, where you have. Uh, please, please <laughs> go to the filling station so that I won't be accused of fuel racketeering. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Let, let, let's all continue to, you know, hope that uh, things will get better while we smile, you know, and uh, things will just get better. Chris, thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. All right, uh, Chris Keriwando is Executive Director, African Governance and Leadership Initiative. We'll, we'll do some more talking when we come back, Messi, because we have more interesting conversations ahead. And indeed, um, we'll look at the brain drain situation in the health sector. Um, it's brain drain gain for those of other countries, but it's drain brain drain pain for us mm. in Nigeria. We'll be right Definitely. back. Definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll take right a break back. and be right back. back.